Ready? Uh, welcome everybody, YouTube land denizens. We always like to do this soft beginning opening on YouTube just to make sure everything is working correctly so we can do a soft hello with our guest, Damien Lupo on the show today. Say hello. <laughs> hey, 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 way. Hey, hey. Okay, cool. So quiet on the set. We're about to launch it live on the audio side for those that aren't sophisticated enough to be on YouTube to watch us um, fellow uh, <laughs> baldies. <laughs> get together and do our thing. Okay, here we go. Shh, quiet on the set. Here we go. <laughs> All right, welcome to the Money Lab Live podcast, episode number 83, the losing everything to ego, greed, and speed money story. All right, welcome back to another live broadcast of the Money Lab podcast from the Six Figure Academy. I am your host, Wei Hong from the Six Figure Academy. And this is the podcast where we give you tips, strategies, and interviews with other entrepreneurs on how to create that ultimate six figure entrepreneurial lifestyle free of bad money stories, money anxiety, and stress so that you can monetize your dreams and execute your genius. Now, if you haven't already downloaded our free ebook from Money Anxiety to Six Figure Mastery, uh, make sure you go to go the six figureacademy.com and get it there. It's the perfect complement to all the things we discuss on the show and quite frankly, it could change your life. Now, if you're not joining us live today or if you are joining us live today and you are not on YouTube live, I don't know what you're doing because YouTube is everything. No, just kidding, it's not. Make sure you get on Spreaker.com or download the Spreaker app on your mobile device and search for the hashtag. Hashtag, and for those of you who don't, aren't into knowing what hashtag is, it's called the pound sign. Hashtag the money lab so that you can join us in the chat room, ask questions and interact with us and our guests. Now, while you're there, subscribe so that you don't miss an episode. You can catch us every week. For all of the ways to find us, go to the sixfigureacademy.com forward slash radio for all the details. And if there's something that you love about what you hear on this episode today that you know could help someone you care about, and I guarantee you with the guests that I have on that, you will. Remember, sharing is caring. Share the show to that person. Now, today's episode is being sponsored by the Energy Mind Body Transformational Experience events, which run live, no pitch, full day events, where the goal is to have that one shift one transformational experience to help you optimize your energy, mind, and body. Go to www.embte.com for more details on the upcoming events. Now, I'm really excited about our show today because we are going to have a we're going to a financial dojo today on our show to learn from a financial freedom genuine bona fide blueprint sensei okay not only sensei in the financial world but also sensei in at uh, the whole every sense of the word from a martial arts standpoint so a few things i want you to actually kind of pay attention to so that you don't miss it because we're gonna go over a lot of very cool topics one of them is what is financial freedom we hear about people talk about it all the time but what is that really and we're going to hear it directly from the sensei about that rewriting your financial rules because sometimes if the rules aren't serving you financially then you probably need to rewrite it and then ultimately what is a financial blueprint what is a financial freedom blueprint because we hear blueprint all the time but what about the freedom piece and then finally how to reinvent yourself financially and anything else that may potentially pop up. Now, I was going to go through this massive bio and everything. I got a chance to talk to this guy today and I've said, you know what? We're just going to go for it because he's he's uh, comfortable off the cuff as an I. So first and foremost, this guy was introduced to me by a good friend of mine, Carrie Hokama. Shout out to Carrie right there, who was actually our num was on our number one episode on this uh, podcast. But anyway, welcome to the show, Damien Lupo. Let's talk about you for a moment. <laughs> All right, well, it's good to be here, man. Let's do it. I know. I love the step and repeat in the background. So for those of you who aren't watching, go to the video and watch it. There's a cool little step and repeat. And it's such a cool thing because I love that design. Did you design that yourself, that little icon in the back right there with the half suit and the half like gi? I, I did. I, I, well, I designed the idea and then somebody that actually had skills right. executed it, which is a, it's a good business lesson. Like if you look at my very first book, Maverick Mistakes in Real Estate Investing, yeah. if you want to see the worst designed book that's ever been printed, <laughs> 
go to Amazon and it, you'll cringe. It was me on a PowerPoint presentation using Comic Sans font. Terrible idea, but you can see what <laughs> Comic Sans font. font. Uh, you know, I, I like that font though. That font is, you know, it's fun. It's not a book. It's terrible. It's but it's terrible. Not, yeah, it is terrible because everybody. Uses, it's that and that and uh, pap papyrus. Right. Papyrus is used papyrus or whatever you call it. Papyrus is used everywhere. Every holistic place I go, every other holistic place uses that font for their for their for their font. I said, okay, use something different because that's what everybody else uses. But anyway, it's a cool font, but it's just been overused. It's like burnt out. Now, <clears throat> what's really cool is this is, you know, I have to remember to introduce you to my client that has business jujitsu. Shout out to Mark Longwith over in um, Vegas because you guys probably have a lot to talk about in terms of how you guys can coordinate a few things in terms of, you know, because both of you have such strong backgrounds in martial arts and you guys incorporating that into that. So let's talk about you a little bit. I mean, I mean, what are you all about? Let's give you your live straight from the horse's mouth bio, okay? I know I heard this probably, we talked about this in the barbershop, but you know, I mean, not everybody's in the same barbershop as we are. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure if our, our barbershop is really still in business because there's nothing to cut. But <laughs> can you just pay? It reminds me of that uh, uh, I'm gonna get you sucker movie where um, Chris Rock goes in there and he asks for how much for just one rib, you know? How much does this cut one hair? <laughs> Instead of charging the twenty, thirty bucks, says, can you just cut this for a dollar? <laughs> yeah, it's called negotiation based on our situation. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, enough about that. Let's talk about you. Who uh, who is Damien Lupo? You know, what are you, where do, where do you come? What are you coming from, and how did you get to where you are today? I, you know, I, I was the one that. I, who am I? I'm a, I'm a guy that just went out and started doing things really naively, based on what I heard and, and a dream. And I mean, it's it's funny because when I was a kid growing up in Alaska, I I heard you came from Alaska. Holy I grew up in Alaska. I mean, I literally dodged polar bears in the Arctic Circle, and that, that was one of my jobs uh, when I was 19. What? Wait, wait, what? You dodge polar bears? I mean, we hear I mean, about this and people think, oh, yeah, whatever, that's just the thing. You, What do you mean you dodge polar bears? Polar bears are literally aggressive. They're the most aggressive bear that's out there, and if they see something move, they go kill it and eat it, because if it moves, <laughs> it's probably got nutrition. Right. In, human beings included, and I worked in the in the Arctic, uh, the Arctic Circle in the oil fields when I was wow. 19, and I was the I was the brilliant guy that was cutting up fruit and taking out the trash and and running manual labor and part of that was the trash outside which was where the polar bears hung out so I had to dodge polar bears otherwise they kill you. Wow! Did it, and and it's in snow too. Yeah, and so when I was there, it was it was the winter and from December until January the sun sets below the horizon. So for sixty days there is no sun. There's no view. It's just darkness. So if you want to talk about an extreme environment that's about as close to Mars as you can get, that would be my job in uh I was nineteen in the Arctic Circle. I mean, how did you even see them? I mean, how do they see you? I mean, if it's if it's in the dark, I mean I'm assuming there's they still hunt in the dark. Yeah, they, they, they hunt and, and you've got you've got man made lights that are out there, so you know, hopefully you see it, but sometimes you'd have windstorms and, and snow. I mean this is like there's a survivor show called Survivor and that's BS compared to being up in the Arctic Circle where you're taking up the trash and it's very dim and I think it's more like world's deadliest catch, right? I mean yeah, it's, it's like, kind of more like that in the in, in the snow. Oh my oh my god, that's such a fascinating thing. That in itself is a story. You should just write a book on just your adventures as the the trash guy. <laughs> well, you know, one of the funny stories is that people, and this is kind of, we, we go back to, you know, who am I? I'm the guy that's willing to go out there and make mistakes, and now I just know that they're not going to kill me. People go, a mistake is going to kill me, and I, if I fail, I'm going to be an idiot because I was raised that way. And I go, hey, here's the thing, though. If in reality, what you're afraid of is your, your brain, your amygdala is saying, hey, it might eat you. Because a thousand or a hundred thousand years ago, there were these things that would eat you. Unless you grew up in Alaska with me, or <laughs> Africa with me, where they, the lions will eat you. If you're not in one of those two places, the mistakes grow you. But we think that they're going to eat you. And I'm like, okay, look, I know what it's like to be. <laughs> where a mistake could eat you. <laughs> yeah, it's not how you live. You live in freaking Los Angeles. There's no bears there. There's right. no tiger. Right. 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 <laughs> You live, you live in the mainland of of the United States, not not in Alaska. Oh my God! So so having survived that, that must have made everything else in entrepreneurship like easy. I was like, well, nothing's gonna kill me like like that job. It's it's funny because when I went up there my first week, I remember thinking this is gonna kill me. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not coming was, back. <laughs> I, well, I, I called my dad at the time and I said, this sucks. I'm working 14, 16 hours a day. I'm just. It's a grind. He goes, what doesn't kill you will make you stronger. And I'm like, but it might kill me. There's polar bears. <laughs> and he said, just hang in there. And I was thinking, oh my gosh, I'm never going to make it. 
And guess what? It didn't kill me, and I kept going, and it got to the point where I actually got in trouble because uh, in the beginning, it took me 16 hours to do a 14-hour job or uh-huh. you know, 12-hour job. Right. And a few months in, it took me about five hours to do a 12-hour job, and they said, you've got way too much free time. And so I got in trouble for getting too good at my thing. It's very strange. Yeah, and that's probably why you don't work for the man anymore. <laughs> I, I, yeah, here's a, let me tell you how bad of an employee I am. I am so unemployable. I worked for Peter Schiff, who I'm very good friends with. Uh-huh. I worked with him on his U.S. Senate campaign in 2010. Okay. After six months, I got fired as a volunteer. And you don't generally fire volunteers that <laughs> are full-time that move across the country. <laughs> but that's how bad it was. And they said, we don't think this is a good fit. We think you'd be happier somewhere else. I'm like, why? Because I want to win. Like, I really want to win. You guys are looking for your next job. And that was uh, different. I just realized I'm not meant to work for somebody else because I try to win. Yeah. What? Yeah, that's weird. Okay, so 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 you supported politics. You went to politics. You you you, you uh, dodge polar bears. You dodge, what a story so far. <laughs> and 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 where you are right now is you are um, a coach, speaker, author. I mean, all the above. I mean, yeah. I mean, I I do everything I do is really about it, it's about freeing a million people from financial bondage. Mm-hmm. And I, my my belief is that we put these these handcuffs on ourselves and we. We, we're stuck, and it's it's self-induced, imposed by these belief systems and how we reinforce those with the mm-hmm. people that are around us. And so I do things, everything I do is to help break those those shackles off so people can do their thing. Mm-hmm. Sometimes speaking, I write books, and I give people control of their retirement, both physically and emotionally and mentally, because a lot of people have some really screwed up ideas about retirement. Like, hey, if I have $2 million in my mutual fund 401k, I'm gonna be free. No, you're not, you're gonna be trapped with $2 million. <laughs> <laughs> just a different version of prison right so so you help people with a finan- you know and from a financial and create freedom and also more importantly and the focus on the retirement side right it, it's on the retirement side and the, the thing that's very very different in in the, in the work that I do is mm-hmm. I'm a hardcore numbers geek so you bring something to me you bring your financials I was in Belgium with a, a guy that I, I just met him there and we're talking we're having a having a whiskey or something downstairs nice. and he's telling me about his his uh, his practice his medical practice uh-huh. he said it's going really well and I said really he goes yeah our numbers are up we're, we're making 40 fifty thousand a month and I'm like cool so you basically started this thing off uh, in January it's it's now September so how much money's in the bank he goes no you're not listening to me our profit is this and I said I understand but you're not talking about the right thing that's called your statement of cash flow uh-huh. what's really in the bank And he's like yeah, I don't even like you and he left next morning he's like you know I didn't like you last night but you made me think uh-huh. I had really thought about the cash and I go yeah it's because I'm a numbers geek the yeah. cash and the numbers there are what matters, and so I ju- I just drill down into people's reality and blow apart their the smoke. And so the work I do is really getting people clear on the truth. Yeah, and once the truth we can work with it, but you can't live in a lie, and you certainly can't change a lie. No, and especially when it comes to money and everything like that. I mean, you can lie to yourself all you want, and the the area that I do is like I I, I get un I, I get to the core of why are you lying? You know, what's 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 your money story? What's your bad? So speaking of which. Let's talk about your money story because it's a really cool. It sounds like a really cool one, which is you know um, a line from your book. You know, it's like losing everything to ego, greed, and speed. I, I can't. I want to hear that story. I mean, what what was that story all about? Tell tell us the money story that shaped you from 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 your childhood and what you had to do overcome that to actually get you to where you are today. When I went out into the world, into the wild, if you will, and I <laughs> literally, started, I mean, that, literally, well, I, I don't know if I went into, I went into a different version of the wild because the wild was I, I walked to the bus stop and there's moose on the side of the road and you, know, awesome. you have to watch that. When I went out, I started, I went to college, I got thrown out of college a couple of times. <laughs> Uh, one of them, I started a bookstore. I'm starting to see a trend. It's, You're getting thrown out of everywhere. I, yeah, 86 no, from I, everything. <laughs> no, it doesn't. As an entrepreneur, you just like you can't be put in a cage. It makes you crazy. So I'm in this thing studying engineering, and I go, you know what? I'm tired of these bookstores ripping everybody off. So I'm going to fix the problem. I mean, you want to make a billion dollars? Go find a big problem, right? And then deliver the solution. Yeah. So. I started a bookstore and I put the bookstore on campus out of business and they said, you either shut down or we're gonna kick you out. And I said, yeah, but I'm paying for school. So in a week, I said, I'll, I'll, I'll get back to you in a few days. And a few days later, I had finished up, everybody made more money, everybody got their books cheaper, bookstore was basically bankrupt and I paid for school and I left. I'm like, this is the wrong place for me. So I, I just, but I was, I was in school trying to make everybody else happy because people thought, like parents and, and family, that college was the best choice. Not for somebody that gets in a cage and goes crazy. I love that. You Did you just say you went to school to make everybody else happy? 
Yeah, I'm probably the only one that's ever done that in the history of humanity, right? That's <laughs> exactly what I did. <laughs> Do you know what ethnicity I am? <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure that is a baked-in, built-in, neuroplastic uh, type of thing for you. Right, that's oh my god especially in the asian culture not to mention that my grandfather was the minister of education in taiwan for a while and so basically hello i mean i i was born i was born with a academic spoon in my mouth <laughs> yeah and, and a boot up your ass to make sure you stayed there and exactly <laughs> and i fought that i fought that for the family oh, like, my god. oh my gosh you didn't get a straight a's we need to get you more tutors hey <laughs> maybe i'll learn more if i get a d in something you know, but that's not what we're taught. And then you set people up to be in a space of fear. Like, right. I can't make a mistake. Dude, that's where all the mis that's where that's all where the all the learnings is. are. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah. OK, so you and I speak the same language. Awesome. Perfect. So basically, you got kicked out of school or you left school. I think you just kind of left school. I, I, I did. Um, yeah, that was it was a, it was a forced exit. And I didn't really have a choice. I had a choice. I and mean, we, all, we all have choices. I, right. It makes me crazy is when people say i have to do this or i can't do that i'm like really because you're really? in a maximum security prison in your own mind you literally can't go anywhere because you've decided oh my gosh I it's not an option right okay. not true but you know you can think it you're right. stuck so yeah i did that and and then i started going like I, I i had a buddy that had read a couple of real estate books and he and i had an insurance agency i was selling insurance and he goes mm -hmm. hey man i got a, I got a deal i was like Psst, hey buddy i got a deal and i said what's the deal he goes <laughs> out of the back of a white van i got a deal <laughs> it was. It was like you know, trench coat open. And I, and I'm like, what, what's in that thing? It's like, I got a single family house. We can, we can have it. I'm like, okay, cool. What am I supposed to do? Am I like on the lookout? He goes, no, man, you're the money. I'm like, I don't have any money. I'm a, I'm a startup insurance agent. He goes, we only need six thousand bucks. I said, cool. So Visa and I partnered with him. I, I used my Visa to put the money up, cash advance, New Year's Eve, 1999, and bought this house. He vaporized, t took off, said, I don't want to help anymore. And so I just went out there and said, okay, well, I better figure out how to do plumbing and electrical. I learned how to electrocute myself and pull plumbing out of a wall and flood my <laughs> house. I fell off the roof. I got high from the paint. Like it was. You were looking for the next polar bear basically to take you down. <laughs> yeah, I, I created a nightmare of learning. It was, uh... it was an amazing opportunity, but I, it, I went in the wild. I didn't know anything about that stuff. And so I just learned it from Home Depot aisles, like, you know, like the little yeah. hard how to do this or that. I love Home Depot. Like, Home Depot's great. I don't need to read that. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that's what I did. And I just did it like 150 times. And, Holy cow. And because nobody, people at seminars, which I think are the accelerated learning space in today's day and age, like universities are a terrible place to learn something that's actually practical. I, yeah. I just went and they said, here, here's what you do. And I go, great. I followed their steps and I didn't try to rewrite stuff. I just did it. 150 houses later, I was like, yeah, you're a badass. And that's where the universe said, uh, we don't think we agree with you. <laughs> and then what happened? And and then I got my Ferrari and, and I was thinking I was even a bigger badass. And, and then um, when I had a lot of money in the bank, like several million dollars, I thought, ah, I can I can do no wrong, so I went and I, I leveraged you, up. I went from the you houses. got you got that God complex going on there a little bit oh, financial. Man, this is like beyond. I was I was omni powerful, <laughs> omni -president. I was the man. Sounds like me the in the twenties. Yeah, that's what happens. Too much money in your twenties. Like you yeah, see exactly. Sports players and things. Too much money. Too much ego. It's kind of like Judge Dredd. Like I am the law. Yeah. Yeah, I I, I, I was the man. Yeah. Like, I was, I was, that's what I did. And so I, I started spreading it out into deals with extra zeros. So mm -hmm. I was flipping $4 million houses on the East Coast. I was nice. having 100 unit complexes next to Graceland in Memphis. By the way, not a very pretty place. And I know this because I got robbed there twice. I, my security guard was killed while on duty. My armed security guard what? across from Elvis's house. Like I'm going through all this stuff. So when <laughs> the meltdown happened, it wasn't just losing the money. People lost their lives. Like It was bad. Oh my God! I mean, it's it's literally like the polar bear followed you outside of Alaska and was following you. Where I mean, it wasn't. I mean, wow. <laughs> yeah, it's a metaphor for my life, and and there's a learning that things will chase you until you confront them, until you deal with them, and it's really you. You're dealing with yourself. Like Finding Joe is a great movie. It's about oh, the yeah. hero journey. And you do you know the guy? Look here, Pat Solomon. Mm-hmm. Yep, yeah. I, 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 yeah, I know him. Yeah, shout out to Pat. Um, yeah, we, I actually helped him uh, host a, uh, a screening and stuff like that. And so he's local to here, out to out in Venice. And, you know, uh, much love to him and his late wife who recently passed away and stuff like that. But um, but uh, that's cool. 
wow, we, we cross a lot of the same, you know, circles and stuff like that. So anyway, uh, yeah. So yeah, Finding Joe, great movie. Yeah, love that. Yeah, so I mean, that, that was the entire process. It was really just, it was the hero's journey. It was mm-hmm. it was going out, getting mm-hmm. beat up, going into the swamp of, uh, the swamp, so the, the Princess Bride, there's like this swamp in the darkness with these giant rat things. And that was- I RF, mean, I, RFUSs or something like that? Uh, yeah, you know, what, uh, oh, yeah, what are those things? Um, RUSs. Have, so R- they're like, they're Havlinas. They look like those things. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the, uh, uh, it's some it's a, some acronym for, uh, for something. It's like- um, uh, what is it called? Oh, Princess Bride. It's like R F U S S or something like that. R O U S S. R O U S S. Yeah, it's it's um, uh, rodents of unusual size. <laughs> That's right. That's yeah. So <laughs> so that was you know that was me going out into the world, whether it was in the form of a polar bear or or some other thing. There was yeah. you know, these different rats, rodents <laughs> of unusual and, size. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you're going to run into rodents of unusual size if you're an uh-huh. entrepreneur. They yeah. come in different forms. They have different fangs. Yeah. Uh, sometimes they take the, your money. Sometimes they take an appendage. I mean, it kind of depends on your journey. Literally. Well, in your particular case, it's kind of like that. You know, I mean, it, you're unique in that your mistakes literally takes people's lives. <laughs> I mean, sadly, it's... Oh, my God. Yeah, it's... yeah, And, and this is one of the things that I think is we have to be really careful about when we do things like in, in investing, there's all it. When I was doing my investing stuff, and, and I had investors, mm-hmm. uh, we all lost money together. And I didn't really think about that when I was in my 20s because the sky was blue. There was no storm, and I I wasn't mature enough. And I my ego took over where I basically pushed away the mentors that had gray or no mm. hair like us, <laughs> with the wisdom. Yeah, right. And I said I know better. I didn't know jack squat. No. And so yeah. The the process was learning, wow, I actually don't know as much as I thought. And the pain was when people that I'd known for 30 years that lost money with me, we lost all of our money together, and they said, you're literally the worst thing that's ever happened to me, and I hope you rot in hell. Oh my God. That's brutal. And that's that's what can happen if you're, if you're like if you're investing or you've got a business or whatever and you're raising money I see that happening a lot I was like oh man this is gonna end ugly for these people because they're too reckless they think it's all good it's mm. not all good things happen and you've got to be responsible so. yeah and then also recognizing that an investment is that it is exactly that it's an investment I mean you you especially the more aggressive and the more lucrative it could be the more the potential in terms of losing it all you know um, people don't realize that, of course. You know, you can take this soft approach, and then, of course, then you wait forever. But then, you know, you, you know, it's, that's like a whole whole separate thing, right? <laughs> it, you know, it's. It, I think we're afraid. I know I was um, at at some point where there maybe there was a potential. Like when I did my apartment thing, mm-hmm. and it was a mess. Nobody lived in Memphis, but we were going to do this thing, and we had never done it before. And so we we painted this this picture of what it was going to be. Mm-hmm we were hopeful so our optimist brain was in full force right our practical realistic you know pessimistic part of our thinking was not alive it was Ah, whatever (laughs) you know you can go to an investor a rational investor will look at things and go yeah i understand the risk i could lose my money and i'm going to do it anyway those are the investors you want you do not want somebody that's concerned that they might lose their money that they don't understand the risk Uh yeah run if you if you're raising money or you're doing deals you don't want people. That's not an investor. Mm-hmm. That's a nervous uh, product of the educational system that has right. been convinced Wall Street will never do you wrong. I mean, that's that's kind of what you're dealing with. So be yeah. careful about those people. I think it's a huge lesson that cost me cost me a lot of relationships with people. Oh, I'm because- sure. Yeah. Um, wow. So so how did this money start? I mean, how did your how did you have this under any understanding of how money works? I mean, did you grow up with it, or did was it something that you just kind of like divine intervention just like say this is how money works or did you learn it from dad mom i mean where was this this fire entrepreneurial fire and this money story that you are able to able to run along with the polar bears (laughs) man tell me no tell me no you can't do that and i'll show you 14 different ways how i'm gonna do it i'm gonna screw up 13 of them and on the 14th i'll deliver i was told we didn't have money we didn't have resources the answer is no and i said sorry i'm gonna go figure it out so i did that when i was a kid Uh and it just kept evolving okay so the money was me going out there and where just... did you learn that though i mean because it's because not everybody ha- figures that out i mean it's not everybody takes that ch- makes that choice you know you know i th- i think sometimes I, I give my dad a lot of crap and, and he taught me a lot he mm-hmm. was he, he was a big warning for a lot of things he did and so I, I don't do what a lot of people do i actually am very different from him 
but he pushed really hard to try to contain me because he grew up in New York City. It was very bad. He was basically homeless on the edge of that. Okay. And so it was all about security. And he would tell me no to try to protect me. And he did it so hard that when for me to push through it, I had to gain strength. So mm. by the way, that is financial freedom. It's mm-hmm. the confidence you build from the muscle in the process of going through something. Right. And that's what I had to go through. So if he had been easy, maybe I wouldn't be as strong as I am. I, I wouldn't have pushed because yeah. it would have been simple. And I think that that's a value. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean you want to crush somebody and destroy their spirit. Right. But it doesn't mean that you need to be really, really easy and gentle with kids. Like, it's like hard love, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, but not, not and, everybody does well with hard love, though. I mean, there's sometimes there are people that just basically cave in and they're just like, oh, okay. And it's like, I mean, w- what would you say is, is, is the difference? I mean, you know, from, from someone like you and someone that just says, okay, dad, I'll just do that. Okay, you're right. You know, type of thing. That's the dance. I mean, that's the, the dance is creating the opportunity for kids and, and for young people to learn through the experiences and make the mistakes. Your mm-hmm. job is to make sure that they don't die. Right. Like you don't say, okay, go back into the woods in Alaska and we'll see you in a month and hope it works out. I know it's January. Like that's not the training I'm talking about. Don't so, do that. So, so I, I'm thinking your money story came from your adventures in the wilderness. You were taught by nature. You weren't even taught by your parents. You were taught by nature on how to survive and what it takes to survive. And since you happen to be in a capitalistic world, you might as well use money as the tool to make that happen. <laughs> Yeah, that's probably something. You know, it basically happened. And you know, <laughs> I, I almost got killed in the Kenai River fishing, and it because it'll suck you in. It'll just take you away. And and it's really fascinating. And this is probably a metaphor for something. But I remember going across the river, very uh-huh. fast flowing, and I I stepped, and I remember going, oh, this is getting deeper, and the water was going to come in over my waders, and I went, oh no, this is bad because the water goes in, it sucks you in, you're gone, you're dead. Uh-huh. So I turned around, and when I stepped back, it got deeper, and I was like, oh no. And then you go into a little panic. And so you have to decide, am I going to live or am I going to die? And you just absolutely commit. And you see a lot of people that don't know how to commit to something. And oh, they just swept away. There, water would take them. Yeah. So good, good lesson. Are you going to commit even if every direction the water's getting into your pants? Yeah. I remember when uh, in football, my buddy said, you know, when he was telling me how to make sure I don't get hurt in football. He says, the people that get hurt, they actually are the ones that only give 80 to 90 percent. They give less than 100 percent. Whereas if you give 100%, your body is engaged 100%, maybe even more, it actually buffers you and keeps you from getting hurt. That, that's to... the exact same thing when you're when you're in martial arts. If you're if, if you punch through a brick or a board, right. if you give 99%, you're gonna break your hand. Yeah. If you give 100%, you go right you through it. You commit to it, it's... right. Yeah, let's talk about that. So, so you are a, what, fifth Dan or what? Yeah, fifth down in, in Yokido, and Yoke. I've got other black belts and different things. Okay, so, and other things. Okay, great. For those that don't follow the the the, the structure of martial arts and everything like that, um, especially the Japanese structure, please explain what that is. You know, in terms of your journey around the whole uh, martial arts thing and how that relates to you breaking through. Because I could see where that greed and speed is. Because if you were re- if you grew up in an environment where you don't know if you'll survive the next day, of course you want things as fast as possible. Of course you're going to take as much as you can because you don't know what's going to happen the next day. <laughs> no, right. and, and I was also trying to prove something. And so mm-hmm. the, because I, I dropped out of school and I didn't have the typical credentials, right. there was a part of me that wanted to show that I was actually worth something, that mm. I had a worth. And that's one of the most dangerous things about losing $20 million like I did in 2008. Right. I My net worth and self-worth were so tied together, I got lost. And it's very oh. dark when you have negative $5 million and you go, wow, so I have a negative mm. self-worth. This sucks. I, I, I love what you just said there. I mean, this is, and that's a very common thing that I, when I work with people with money, anxiety, and everything like that, your net worth and your self-worth we're tied together. What a cool it, phrase! Yeah, it, how is that really uncommon? And the answer is no. It's, no, it's not. I mean, why? Why do we get it? Why do most people get a car every two to three years? Yeah, it's, it's they're trying to validate who they are. What's wrong with your other car? Nothing. <laughs> it's constant validation. Yeah, it's, I bump, it's, I bump level myself. I'm growing. Yeah, no, that's that's true. In our minds, we think we're growing. What we're doing is growing our debt load. In most cases, <laughs> right. and that's. It's taking us backwards. Right. We're satisfying the significance piece of the six human needs instead of the contribution piece, which is really what we need to be focusing on. But it's easier to slip into the security and significance piece with our shiny objects. Yeah. That's, I, I'm, I'm guilty of that. That's what I was doing. I, get, I, think, you know, I, I think everybody stuff. who works with money at some point, that's our journey, right? I mean, the catharsis that we hit that we realize, oops, 
I am not a money god. I am not omnipotent. I <laughs> I am not Midas. <laughs> I definitely needed a reminder. The universe, it's like the universe gives you nudges. It gives yeah. you feedback. It says, good job, things like you're in the flow, and it says, nope, bad, and it gives you a nick, and it hurts. But then it, if you don't listen, it gives you a bigger <laughs> it's a signal, sledgehammer and it knocks your head off. Runs over you, like, you're like, ah. You know. <laughs> I, I had a 747 land on me, and that was that hurt a lot. Wait, I what? I needed that. Like, I could not, not, not <laughs> literally, but. Oh, okay, I was going to say, is that another story? You know, yeah, with yeah, you, yeah. I don't know what, I, I don't know. There's so many things that have happened in your life that are just ridiculous. You know, I, 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 okay, well, here, here's, a, here's a real story. I've had, <laughs> I, I jumped out of four planes uh, as skydiving. I had three accidents. I lost my right arm my first time, my, my left arm my second time, like atrophied my bicep. I had dead arms hanging. The third time, my, my chute failed. And I had to use the reserve chute, almost landed in power lines and died. I mean, it was bad. The fourth time, because apparently I don't learn, I jump out and the space shuttle exploded over me. (laughs) So the universe is speaking to us all the time. (laughs) So not only I think you developed this, I'm not listening to my dad. So I'm not listening to the universe either. Uh, the universe will kick your ass, yeah. by the way. You don't listen to it. I mean, your dad, you know, you know it's, it's, it's annoying, but the universe has unlimited firepower. Yeah. <laughs> Holy cow. So, 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 you, so you're going through this journey. The ego, greed, and speed catches up to you. Was this before or after martial arts or martial arts was throughout this whole process? So this is in the beginning. So I started martial arts in, in 2000. So mm-hmm. I've been doing this almost 20 years. And in the beginning, I was doing real estate and martial arts. It's probably why my, my real estate lasted as long as it did because I had that grounding. Mm. But I still was in the beginning stages. And in martial arts, there's this misnomer that once you become a black belt, once you get a black belt, that something has happened and, and you're like, you're a badass or whatever. Right. The, the reality is once you become, once you earn a black belt, if people say, how long does it take? I go, I don't know, 15 minutes. Go to Dick's Sporting Goods, get yourself a black belt. <laughs> if you want to become a black belt, it you, you get Color to yourself point. black. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, there, there are some choices, but the truth is, when you be, when you earn your black belt, you're yeah. just a student at that point. You you've like become consciously competent. You're certainly right. not unconsciously competent. That's right. the fourth stage of mastery. Exactly. You're in stage three, but you know somebody that has a black belt, man, that doesn't mean jack. It just means you hung out long enough to where you kind of <laughs> understand what you're doing a little <laughs> bit, but you're certainly not going to do it instinctually at that point. Right. And that's the first dance. That's you know. <laughs> showed on the first black belt level and and fifth don is i mean really you're in it's like in a place of creation so my third degree black belt was in something that i was a part of the Mm -hmm. fifth is in the martial art that i founded called yokido it's Mm. i created this wait you created a martial art yeah yokido is a blend of aikido and and yoga and reiki and it's it's about healing in the process of blending and and it's it's about relationship and presence more than anything so it's very different it's I saw a lot of things I liked in yoga, but there was no real relationship in yoga. Mm. And I saw a lot of things in martial arts that I liked, but I didn't feel like people were being present enough. So I smashed right. them together and added Reiki, which is healing hands. And that's where you start to heal the, the, the world in the process of moving through the conflict. Oh, I love that. We need to have you come speak on our stage. Yes. Okay. We'll speak more offline. And then All we right. also need to talk to Pat. Pat, after I talked to him for a while, he wanted to create a whole like Finding Joe thing around money. You and I can talk a lot about that and find a couple other money people, and yeah. it'd be phenomenal. I mean, he's he's a, he's a good guy too. So I mean, but uh, wow, that's <clears throat> that's fantastic. So so when when if you're anything like me at all, it took a, a massive catharsis for you to turn it all around. Let's talk about that one. <laughs> well, there, there's a there's a process of the of the catharsis of reinventing and and shifting and. So the first process that I went through was just absolute avoidance and pretending it didn't happen. And that's, you know, <laughs> denial. It's like a basic human thing. Right. Oh, it didn't, never happened. Denial, delusion, blame. Yeah. Well, it's, 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 yeah. I remember I, I lost all this money and, and I hadn't, my, my American Express black card hadn't been turned off yet. It actually got turned off when I was buying toilet paper at Costco. But, <laughs> it, but I did have this thing. <laughs> and I, I, I'm sitting at this bar with a buddy of mine and. He's like, so how's it going? He'd lost a bunch of stuff. And I said, man, hold up my black card. I'm like, I still got it. He's like, ah, boy. And I go, looking back, I'm like, what an idiot I was. Like, <laughs> yeah, I got my, my American Express. And, you know, they, they turned it off. Eventually, when the IRS showed up at my door with four armed agents, 
knocked on the door. By the way, they weren't even there for me. Like when I finally realized who they were there for, it was for the lady that lived in the house before me, but <laughs> they, they were there and it scared me so bad. It brought me to my knees and I said, something is off and I need to fix, like, what is it? I was so, so messed up. So that was the so universe's fun. final message to you. It, it was. Um, and it was the final part one because like there were more that kept happening. <laughs> I still wasn't getting through it. And so they, so I ended up going to a guy and I said I need help. And, and it was a guy who turned out to be a sensei of mine that we we ended up training together for several years. Oh wow, cool. We, we spent two years in his office. He's a he's a therapist and he literally asked me one question for two years every week. What is true? And we went deeper and deeper and deeper into it mm. until I was able to see myself and observe myself and own everything and that that was the shift to where I was now open to not significance and security but contribution and then it was when my my dad got really sick and ended up passing away and he stared at me weeks before he died and said you know there were a lot of things that I wanted to do and that's the moment where I flipped a switch and said it's no longer okay to play small it's no longer okay to have regret that that is hell on earth and I'm not going to do it so I'm going to go all in and I'm going to figure out what my purpose is here mm -hmm. not to consume but to contribute and to have the circulation with other people that's right. why I'm here and that's that was the change wow yeah I'm really glad Carrie introduced us because this is this has been absolutely amazing so far in terms of your story and whatnot so 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 that was like the first of the first step of the catharsis right and then finding the mentor or the sensei <clears throat> and then um at what point did you realize and then you just acknowledge the fact that okay great i am integrating i'm actually making a shift and change right now i i, I think when i really got that it was when i was willing to let go of everything cutting everything else except for this narrow focus in my life and letting go of the need for acceptance by anybody else other than myself it was it was taking, I used to compare myself to Michael Dell. Well, Michael Dell had a, had a business in his dorm room and he made $26 billion. Why can't my bookstore be worth 26 billion? Because I'm comparing myself externally mm. and, and shifting and, and just saying, okay, who am I and what's my potential? Right. And really that was the, that was the, the question to, to start moving into what is right for me versus adding all these things, all these shiny, all these shiny acorns as a drunk squirrel we tend to chase all the time. And I said, wait, I just like let, let the, all the acorns go. Shiny I, acorns yeah. and drunk squirrels. Oh my god! <laughs> it was like you look at Facebook and it's, it's like a massive amount of shiny objects, and you just like, oh, I can't get enough. And we're not present. Yeah. We're not committed. Yeah. We're all over the place, and our life is a wreck. Why? Because we're not focused. We're not. We're not in. Yeah. So you know that that going in and saying no to almost everything and almost everybody, is a massive shift when you're clear about where you're going. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I just reread another book that I love I, for for years. Um, there was one year that I bought a whole case of it for Christmas, and that's all I gave was that book to everybody. I don't know if you ever done that, but, but uh, I did it Finding Joe. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, so I did it for. It's called The Message of a Master, and I just reread it again the other, and it really it talks about that. Is that you know one of the biggest reasons why people don't become master manifestors because there's too much static. There's not enough focus. There's not enough of that you know that 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 almost like provincial you got the blinders on once you have decided you know the direction of where you want to go as you did you know with the with the uh, purpose and what you're here to do and once you just closed everything off and said no to everything else then that that really isn't that that is the moment where you start to truly manifest in a very powerful way where you get to exact your purpose so to speak right that, that's it. it and where does that start it starts with presence mm. it starts with getting presence mm -hmm. it's something that most of us don't have any experience with has Mar we, is martial arts the, 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 the do you think martial arts is the, the thing that actually helps you do that more than anything it, else it, you get immediate feedback if you aren't present you end up with a fist in your face or you're bleeding <laughs> on the ground and when you're present you can't be touched so right. to the extent that you end up getting knocked around it's because your presence needs to, needs to deepen mm -hmm. when you deeper you go it's, it's people most people have probably seen the matrix and you see neo and he's dodging bullets well the right. reality is when you're present enough you can feel into what's happening right. and you can sense it because your your brain your conscious brain is is not the it's not the part of you that's that's engaging it's at a deeper level you know subconscious or superconscious and you're able to connect with what's happening instinctually right that's the shift that's the the unconscious confidence mm -hmm. around being it's a relationship it's not just a transaction by the way, these are core principles of business. 
relationships are about presence to focusing on somebody else's needs versus a transaction. How do you get how much cash you can out of their wallet? That yeah. is the worst possible thing. That's a fist fight. Yeah. That is a terrible experience. Uh, that's right? the 80s, right? That is the 80s. That's, you know, that's Michael <laughs> Douglas. <in> Wall Street. That's <laughs> right. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, I, I love how you reference the Matrix. That I reference the Matrix all the time. People think, oh, that's impossible. It's like, no, the reality is, is that when you are as present as the masters of martial arts, the world literally slows. You know, they don't dodge just arrows. They can dodge bullets. I mean, you see it, people do it all the time. Well, not all the time, but I mean, you see these masters that sit there and all of a sudden, you know, they, they, they're so present to everything that's around them, they can literally predict what is going to happen next and anticipate it, you know. It's it's simple, but it's just it's so the idea is simple that you're you're so tuned in that you it's like you can see into the future because you can sense into the future you can sense what's happening and you're not reacting to it on right. on, on that that conscious space and and that's that takes years of committing to that depth of presence that understanding how to be so right. something you do like you don't dodge a bullet you become something that's so together with your environment with other people yeah you become something different and that's the being versus the doing right you become part of the environment as opposed to be like uh the stirring the pot so to speak the stick that, that's interrupting the environment which is kind of what human beings are on the planet I'm really good at that kind of stuff i'm gonna knock this thing around give me a stick i know exactly i tell people all the time we're like the only animal on the planet that consistently goes against nature <laughs> yeah because we think we are so damn good yeah and, and then, you know, a class five hurricane comes over and shows like, us how good. Uh -huh, no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, being with being with being with the truth. And yeah. that's what presence is. It's about being with the truth. Yeah. And the truth is right there all the time. Yeah. The question is, are you ready for it? And most people are too busy interacting and trying to manipulate and control and mm -hmm. instead of ending and being. Yeah. And and so, so I, I think a lot of it is because they don't understand what how benef what the benefit is to, to confront. So so many people are so afraid to look at themselves in the mirror, to come to face the truth, to have, be that radical honesty that the, uh, Paul Blatton wrote the book, Paul, Radical Honesty. I, I don't know if you read it, but it's yep, sure have. it's pretty radical. <laughs> it's a little extreme, <laughs> you know. <laughs> People can't. It's like Jack Nicholson and right. a few good men. You can't handle the truth. Yeah. We don't even want to look in the mirror because the truth is staring yeah. back at us. And it's, it's not even somebody else's truth. Your own truth, right? Your, Your own. own truth. You know. It's better just to watch football and get drunk, and that <laughs> everything will be fine. This is like a better strategy for most people. It is a strategy. It's not a better strategy. It's right. what people do. We numb ourselves into oblivion so we don't have to face the mirror. Yeah. So, so going through everything that you've gone through, then you know, because you know, words are words, and everybody defines words a little bit differently. And a lot of the, the biggest um, annoying word that people throw out all the time, a lot of these uh, are our peers and colleagues that. Um, aren't quite as awakened, so to speak, if you will, not calling anybody out, but um, they talk about financial freedom, get your financial freedom, stuff like that, and they just throw it out like it's nothing. But the reality is it's different for everybody. I mean, how, how would you, what is financial freedom for now that you've gone through this, you know, <laughs> dodging the polar bears of life and gone to a place where you found presence and you're alive, you made it without having killed yourself. <laughs> or being eaten. Or being eaten by the metaphorical polar bear. I love that. You got to write a book. I don't know if, how often you make reference as a, 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 the polar bear as a reference, but I think that needs to go in the title somewhere, the polar bear of your life. You know, that's your next book. I got to tell you that, you know, you have to do that. Your story is so compelling. It's so cool, but you know, so uh, financial freedom, financial freedom. Everybody's got a different version of it, and I think most of what we hear is the marketing spin. Here's yeah. here's financial freedom, and here's my thing that I'm going to sell you that's going to give you financial freedom. The financial freedom is the same thing for every single person, and that's a bold statement. And, and what it is is confidence. It's not cash. It's not cash flow. It's it, you know you give somebody a hundred million dollars. Bernie Madoff did really good with this. People didn't have confidence, so he convinced them. He convinced them mm -hmm. like you know, a condom into giving him a hundred million dollars. And when he went down, people went from a hundred million to zero. So I don't care what number you're trying to shoot for. If you don't have the confidence, you're never free. You build up five or $10 million. Seems like escape velocity, like that's plenty. And it should be if you've got the confidence. But if you have five or $10 million, like Ed McMahon, rest in, in peace, Ed. But if you get that lottery event, whether it's 65 because you retire with a 401k or you just happen to build it up, you sell your business, mm -hmm. the confidence in you being able to create it 
is where the freedom is mm -hmm. because if you don't have that confidence you're going to be afraid you're going to play not to lose and we know mm. what happens in sports when the team starts playing not to lose they freaking lose yeah you lose your money because you're looking for something to validate you the confidence is something that sets you free take all right. my money away i okay fine i mean i'll go create it again because i've got the confidence i that love that shift. yeah i love that you say financial freedom is literally i mean what is financial freedom? it's confidence Confidence in self and confidence is different for everybody. And so that's where then the, the, the uniqueness of it, you know, when you're guiding somebody to get that financial freedom, well, where do we get you to be financially confident? Confident in your ability to be able to, you know, create and, and achieve or a accomplish anything that you want to accomplish when it comes to finances. And, and, and how do you do that? I guarantee you it's not chasing all these shiny nuts on Facebook. <laughs> it's you have to go deep into things. You have to be willing to trip over stuff, trip on your own, you know, yeah. a, a fall. And and bleed and make and, and learn from those those failings, and that's how you build confidence. Mm -hmm. you know, people say, "Well, I, it sounds painful." I'm like, "Have you ever been to the gym? Have you been chased by a polar bear? <laughs> have you been chased by a polar bear? <laughs> like, have you done anything other than sit there behind a book or a screen, thinking that you're going to make your way into that freedom? The answer is no. And until you get out into the wild, and until you actually are willing to mm -hmm. get cut and scraped and build the scar tissue, that's mm -hmm. the confidence. So when are you going to do that? That's the difference. Sounds Turn painful. Key, God, things, what? Yeah. You got to be willing to go out there and do it. People have this interesting definition of what pain actually is, right? So, so, so what you do then is when you're working with somebody like a client or a student or somebody who comes into your world and stuff like that, you, you, you help them rewrite their financial rules, right, to some degree in terms of the rules that they grew up with or in my, like in my particular case, I help people rewrite their money story. But, you know, you, they're, because you're so specific with what you do and so diligent, um, I, I guess rules is a little bit more applicable to what you help your clients or your, your, your students or people who follow you do what, what, what is it what does it take to rewrite a financial rule I and mean, what does it what does that mean anyway well the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to blank slate somebody's life and I, I got this when I moved one of the bazillion times I moved and I was sitting in a blank open living room and I thought if I didn't put my stuff in here what would I actually go get and I started thinking about it and I went back out to my U-Haul truck and I said I like want one thing in there and I brought it in and kind of the, the rest of it went to, to storage and then six months later I just gave it all away Nice. And it was because I was conscious enough not to let legacy stuff coming in. And this is furniture or belief systems or people. Ooh. I started doing the same thing for people. Right. These people, if I met them today, would I say, hey, you, you, I want to be friends with you? The reality is a lot of the people in my life, the answer would be no. So I go, why are they still here? Mm. How is this serving either one of us? Not just me, but how is this serving them? Because we're, we're conflicted. And, and so that's the big thing. And that's the different with. con. We're conning ourselves now. Ourselves. <laughs> and so you, you, you keep conning yourself. It's legacy belief systems. It's yeah. legacy stuff. It's legacy people. Yeah. Or blank slate your life and start with that and then fill in the blank canvas with what matters. You're starting off with the vision and your values and what really matters. That yeah. ends up being your guideline for who you have in your life, for the work that you do, what mm. you focus on. So you have to clear it all out and then start from a blank slate. And it's hard to do when you're on your own. So this is why it's really helpful to be around people that can help guide you through that stuff. Yeah. It's you can do it on your own. The, the truth is, if you don't do it, you're just going to live your past over and over again. Right. It's and all you need to do is bring in one polar bear. And what polar it. bear will change everything? Yep. <laughs> wow. So rewriting that is basically, yes, like you were saying, they're creating the whole blank slate. I love that story because that's it's so poignant and so powerful. I mean, just to kind of say, you know, move somewhere. It literally makes me want to kind of move somewhere right now just so I can go into an empty space. Well, I just did over here and say, hmm, do I need everything that I'm moving over? No, I need this and this and this. That's it. Okay, I don't need anything else. Boom. You know, I think entrepreneurs that are truly kind of on an expansive type of mindset do it all the time. You know, we kind of like and, and, and part of, you know, the work that we do, we help people identify whether or not they have the money gene and everything like that. And part of the behaviors of the money gene is the ability to kind of like inflow and outflow, get rid of out with the old in with the new. We don't need that old stuff. Right. Yeah, we, we get it. There's an emotional attachment to the mm -hmm. stuff and the and the thinking. Uh, it's I think it was a Jim Jim Rohn or Zig Ziglar mm -hmm. talked about stinking thinking and we just get attached to these things and we have the stinking thinking that's driving us and we have to be willing to open it up and let go it gets really hard when yeah. we're around people spouses or yeah. family members or friends that have some type of thinking that was in alignment with us and we say we're gonna move into a different state a right. different thinking a different energy and they try to pull us back down into a box like a bunch of crabs they yeah. pull us down because 
it's weird. We're going to escape into something different and we're going to leave them behind. And people don't want that to happen. Yeah. So they're afraid they'll be lonely for a little bit in the very beginning because you're entering a new world. But we forget that when every, all, every single one of us, when we came out of our mother's womb, we came out alone. We didn't come out holding hands with people and everything like that. We forget that whenever we're merging into a new state of being, a new birth of self, there's nobody else around us, right? And if we can let go of that fear of being lonely and stuff like that so that we can reassess, it's actually very cool because you have, like you said, a whole blank canvas that starts off all over again. And, and that can be exciting or it can be terrifying to people. It really depends on how what you want to do. This is the power of choice. Jay Barton mm -hmm. Co. wrote a book, Your Greatest Power, and it was all about the power to choose. Mm -hmm. And we we sometimes take that for granted and then we're we're like unconscious because we won't choose. We right. let the default happen and that's our choice. That's a pathetic experience of living. Yeah. Yeah. So so you help people rewrite their financial rules and when the rules are done, is that the blueprint? Is that the financial freedom blueprint or is that something else altogether? The so the the, the rules are the framework mm -hmm. and, and then there's the actual process of building the muscle. And that's when I've worked with people over the years, there is a process of doing things that are unusual meaning they haven't done them before and mm -hmm. there's this process it's I basically just take somebody to the financial gym you know where we're, we're going through things it's not like I, I love seminars the way that Robert Kiyosaki teaches because he uses he uses it quantum learning type mm -hmm. of, of strategies where there's a lot of interaction mm -hmm. and the problem is most of our system of learning is set up where you sit there and listen and you absorb and you get three to five percent of what you're learning right and I, like, I like saying okay here's here's step one you're gonna go out into the wild you're gonna go capture a squirrel you're gonna bring it back and say is this me mm -hmm. I mean this is part of our first process of, of getting you out there and you start to realize it's not gonna kill me and then you want to do more and it, it becomes this almost a healthy addiction of mm -hmm. growing mm -hmm. in a real way not just feeding your brain more stimulation I, I that's mental masturbation like you, that's not what we want right we want people to actually grow so it is a process of doing things mm -hmm. first clear and then going doing and then coming back and getting more clear on what we learned it's that cycle and that's why it's not a weekend event right this is the process yeah yeah so so sounds like the rules puts up the sticks and bricks of of the new home that you're helping them build so so to speak and then the the, the blueprint itself is it, it fills in the walls it fills in the space it, it puts in you know the, the items that they want and gets rid of the items that they don't want well i guess that's when they're rewriting the rules and stuff like that but, and then you that you stop bringing stuff into the house. I mean, that's right. part of that blank slate is, is asking the question in this open space of your mind and your life. Right. What do I want in here? And and you don't really have to clear anything out. You just don't bring it in. Hmm. Interesting. Cool. So <clears throat> so now, you know, there are probably people listening because, wow, this sounds amazing. Uh, I, I think it sounds amazing. But if they don't, then I don't even know why they're listening to the show. But anyway, so they're, they're probably listening to this Damon guy is amazing and stuff like that. And he helps people reinvent themselves. So, I mean, how, how is this part? I mean, rewriting your financial rules, establishing a new financial freedom blueprint. Um, you know, being truthful with yourself. Is that is that all part of the process of how you can reinvent yourself financially? Or is there something else more than that to that? Well, I, I will tell you and this, you guys can do this on your own or with somebody, it takes a special somebody that you trust enough to be mm -hmm. able to be vulnerable. But the, the thing that's really valuable for people to start with is to look at your calendar and your bank statement. Mm -hmm. That will tell you it'll tell me if I look at your calendar, and I look at your bank statement, I can tell you who you are, I can tell you what what you value. You can tell me what you value. You can tell me who you are, and then I'm going to look at those two things, and I'm going to say you're full of crap. You're lying. And right. so if you start there, you you have to start with acknowledging what is, what's mm, true. Mm, mm, mm. Acknowledge that you're just playing a game with yourself. Oh, I love that. See the calendar and look at the bank statement, because sometimes don't people don't put anything on calendar. And I said, okay, I guess you value Smart. freedom or chaos. <laughs> it tells you that you're afraid to commit. Yeah, yeah. And then you look at the bank statement, you look at their, their spending habits and where they're putting their money and, 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 and on a consistent basis. You know, I, I kind of like to look at P&Ls and everything like that and also bank statements over the course of a year. Mm -hmm. And then you can kind of really see in the snapshot, it's like, okay, this is why you're challenged. You know, it's yeah, a financial it, mirror. <laughs> it, it really is. And one of the things for the entrepreneurs out there that have financials, one of the biggest missing pieces that I see consistently with people is that they have their balance, they have a balance sheet and they have their P&L and they go, cool. And it's really fascinating because on a monthly or quarterly basis, they look at their P&L and they go, oh, it's up. I have a, I'm making all this money. I've got another 100,000 on my top line. 
or it's down. Either way, they go take a drink. They go to the bar. But <laughs> what, what they're missing is the cash flow. They're looking. At, they're not looking at the statement of cash flows. The mm -hmm. cash is where it's at in terms of your financials. Profit top line is a BS ego number. The bottom line, the net cash. The net. That's that's so significant. You cannot eat your top line. It just makes you feel good. I had a, a metals business, millions of dollars in top line, starving to death because the margins were one to three percent. Oh, that's before that ad sucks. <laughs> it's terrible. It looks good, and then you, you're like, okay, what's the truth here? The truth is, this is a terrible business. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, well, I, and it's funny because um, what, what what we do a lot is we kind of help people address the chaos that's in their financials and stuff like that. Money, anxiety, stress, worry that creates all kinds of chaos, and you leak money everywhere. And what happened was uh, we were working with this one guy, and then for, um, after the first year, he looked at his P and Ls, and he was like, "I'm disappointed." I was like, "Why?" He says, "Nothing's changed. My numbers are still the same." And I was like, "What are you looking at?" And he was looking at the gross. So his, re his gross revenues were the same. But when we looked down to the bottom of net, he had almost doubled, almost tripled what he netted the year before. Mm. And he goes, oh. So, and he's, and I, I pointed him to that. And he goes, okay, so what was different? He says, well, I wasn't as stressed or worried about money. Yeah, you weren't, you weren't what we call stress spending. And that's what happens, that, that chaos, right? So, yeah, there's so many, there's so much synchronicity in a lot of what we do and stuff like that. I mean, I, I, it'd, it'd be interesting to kind of explore in the um, deeper realms of how we can, you know, co-support our clients and our students and everything. We'd love to have you come speak to our, um, our, our masterminds of our students and stuff like that. That happens in between our, our, our teaching and stuff like that. But we can talk more about that later and stuff like that. This is cool. Yeah. Super, super cool. So believe it or not, it's like top of the hour. We've been chasing polar bears this whole time. And, and, and what I want to make sure that people do is when they, when they hear this, whether it be when they heard it live now or they heard it, hear it later, usually more people hear it later, um, is if they want to reach out to you, I want to make it as easy as possible for them to be able to connect with you on any level to be able to engage with you, either on your products, your services, your books, anything like that. What's what's the best way for people to reach out and connect with you, if, especially if they feel like, God, I totally vibe and jive with this guy. I really want to get to know him. How do they reach out to you? How do they connect with you? They, my website, where I live, DamienLupo.com. Uh -huh. it's, it's got every, everything that I'm doing, I keep it one place. It's also part of the saying no, like I don't have 50 different things going on. It's all there. It's it, you know, the, the work that I do, the, the products that where I show up, like yeah. it's all there. And so yeah. you can get more of me. If you want more of me, and I don't, I mean, maybe that's good, maybe it's bad, I don't know. But <laughs> it's, it all lives there uh, on my site. On DamienLupo.com? Okay, cool. Yeah, I, you know, I should actually uh, take heed to that as well. I mean, I've got, I'm currently juggling like five different businesses at once. And so, yeah, I, I might have to kind of like um, uh, listen to this again and listen to what you're talking about. <laughs> there are lessons baked into your questions. Uh, baked into my question is this show was really not about anybody else it's about me learning <laughs> learning stuff but no idea what you're to learn today <laughs> so anyway cool so for those of you who are listening who who have gotten excited and got inspired by damien um just simply go to damienlupo.com keeping it simple keeping it fresh and then uh reach out to him he has i i've, I've been to through his website and there's a there's a couple of cool free things that you could download you can kind of get to know him better he's content everywhere i think he has three books listed on there as well that you can download as well really cool stuff and really good guy and if you had a chance to really kind of listen to this easy to talk to easy to connect with and i'm pretty sure that if you reach out and say hey, i heard you on the show he'll be like cool you know Make sure you're taken care of. So um, if there's one thing that, that someone who's like completely just in the weeds and completely struggling with their, their financial shackles, so to speak, um, which is the words that you use as well, uh, what is one thing, one small incremental thing that they could do today in light of everything? Because there's so many gemstones that they completely missed everything. If they were to take away one thing from you today, what would that be to kind of like just immediately make that visceral shift to start at least nudging them, like you said, in the right direction? Take it, make, make, do an assessment on the people in your life and mm -hmm. say, I had nobody in my life. Would I go invite the people that are in my life now? And mm -hmm. go one by one. And to, to start, before you even do that, come up with your top six or 10 values and then look at the people that are in your life and say, do these people vibe and, and jive with these values? And if they don't, wow. why don't invite them in. And yeah. you may be cutting loose. Yeah. That one thing will change things because you are going to become the average. So many people have said this. You're going to become the average of the five people you're around. Yep. Well, those five people you wouldn't bring in and they're part of your past, you're going to be stuck in your past. Yep. So ask yourself, are these people in line with the future me? Yep. And if they're not, 
big decision to make. Yeah, upgrade your network, change your life. You know, what is important to you? What is most important to you about all aspects? I love that. That's a, uh, that, and that's a great place to start. If you don't start there, then you're kind of like just kind of shooting in the dark anyway, you know? So awesome. Well, you know what? Thank you so much. I believe this is not, this is the first of many interactions that we will have because we speak <laughs> a lot of the same language. We'll probably also meet at the barbershop. Well, we'll have to find a new one since the other one's out of business since they're only cutting, like they're splitting hairs at this point. <laughs> <laughs> literally <laughs> so cool so stick around and let's debrief a little bit afterwards but again thank you so much Damien for coming on I mean everything that you shared was awesome your stories are ridiculously and, and, and amazing in itself uh, I'm sure there's more so maybe in the future we'll have you come on to talk about something even more specific I have a couple other podcasts that maybe that you can join on as well so we'll, we can talk there as well okay That's Awesome. Thank you. So that's our show for this week. Again, if you found this episode to be valuable and you know of someone that else that could benefit from what we talked about today, and if you don't know anybody that could benefit, then that's that's a cue. You need to upgrade your network because you upgrade your network to someone that could benefit from this, then you're starting to move in the right direction, okay? So very, very important, share it, okay? And make sure you subscribe to us on iTunes and give us a thumbs up on YouTube Live because that's how we are able to help more people. And just by doing that, you can pay it forward with the learnings that you got today. We even have a Facebook group called The Money Lab. So join us there to dive even deeper uh, into bad money story elimination strategies. So, all right, so that's pretty much it. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a wrap. Have an amazing week and to a Applying the knowledge that you got from Damien today. We'll be back in two weeks, two weeks on the Money Lab Live podcast where we have Coach Angie Correa back on the show this time and it's all about her this time. So this is Way from the Six Figure Academy and Damien Lupo from Polar Bears R Us signing off. Yeah, money make a world go round. All right, YouTube land, thank you so much for coming on. Um, now we have a soft e soft, e soft entrance and a soft exit. Thanks so much, Damien, for coming on again. Uh, looking forward to us uh, chit-chatting a little bit afterwards. Okay. No doubt. All right, yeah. see you, everybody.